Welcome to iLecture Online and in the last video, if you took a look at that one, we found the work done by an adiabatic process by using the difference in the temperature uh, from the end state and the beginning state. Here again, the problem is where we're taking a diesel engine, this is a single cylinder inside a diesel engine, we're taking the gas at, at the atmospheric pressure, volume of 0.5 liters, to room temperature and compressing it to 1 15th of its original volume. When it does that, temperature goes way up, pressure goes way up, and we're trying to find the work done in that process. And yes, we used this equation in the previous example. But what we're going to do now, and also just to remind ourselves, to find the temperatures, we also use this relationship between the temperature and the volume for an adiabatic process. But we're going to do something different here. We're going to use the gas equation that says that PV equals nRT, there we go. And solve this for temperature. So if we do that, we get temperature is equal to PV over NR. And uh, so we're going to replace T2 and T1 by PV over NR. Now when we do that, notice that uh, we get work done is equal to minus NC sub V over NR. Because I can factor out the NR for the two uh, terms right there. Instead of T2, I'll have P1, uh, P2 uh, V2 minus P1 V1. There we go. Ends cancel out. So we end up at work is equal to negative C over V, the CV divided by R times P2 V2 minus P1 V1. Now, which of those quantities do we have? We have the original volume and the original pressure. So those two are known. Uh, we have the final volume because we know the final volume is 1 15th, the original volume, so the volume is known. The only thing we don't know is the pressure at the final state of the gas. So how will we find that? Well, to find that we use the following equation. We use the equation that P1V1 to the gamma equals P2V2 to the gamma. So just like this equation right here where we relate temperature and volume, we have this equation right here for adiabatic processes that compares pressure and volume. Gamma, of course, still is 1.4. And now what we're doing is solving for P2, so when we do that, we get P2 is equal to P1. We're going to divide both sides by V2 to the gamma, so we end up with V1 over V2 to the gamma power. And remember that V1 is 15 times as big as V2, so that ratio is 15 to 1. Gamma is 1.4, so P2 is equal to 1 atmosphere times the ratio 15 to the 1.4 power. For the calculator, 15 raised to the 1.4 power is 44.3. So that means that this is equal to 44.3 atmospheres. And so that means that now we have both the initial and final pressure, the initial and final volume, and I should be able to find the work done using pressure and volume in this case. All right, let's plug in the numbers. Minus C sub V, C sub V is 5 over 2 R. Divide by R, and of course the R's cancel right away. P2, 44.3 atmospheres. Multiply times V2, which is 1 15th the original volume. The original volume was 0.5 liters. Divide that by 15. Okay, minus pressure 1, which is 1 atmosphere. And volume 1, which was 0.5 liters, the original volume. There we go. Maybe I'll just use brackets here. Okay. But now, of course, we have atmospheres and liters, and we don't want to use that in our calculation. We want to convert that to um, pascals, and we want to convert that to cubic meters. So um, let me put a line here so I don't get this confused. So we need 101,300 pascals per atmosphere. So that's a conversion. Pascals, of course, are newtons per square meter. And then we have to convert from liters to cubic meters. So we have 0.001 meters cubed divided by one liter. And then notice that the uh, atmospheres cancel out and the liters cancel out, liters and atmospheres, and leaves it with pascals and cubic meters. And now we're ready to calculate that result. So starting out with uh, 44.3 times 0.5 divided by 15. We subtract from that 0.5. We multiply times 2.5, we multiply times 101,300, and we divide by 1,000 equals, and 
Work done equals minus 247 joules, which is the same answer that we received before. I don't have the whole answer down there, but uh, same answer as before. Uh, but instead of using temperature, we use the pressure and the volume at the beginning and the end state. And notice we get the exact same answer. Works just as well. And that's how you work with adiabatic processes. So I'm hoping that these last several videos really help you understand how to work with adiabatic processes. Normally they're very confusing, but as you can see, using, utilizing these equations, it becomes fairly straightforward.